I've broken this video down into three carefully thought out sections. Number one, we have motion enslavement. These are high-end premium motion graphics that will amaze your viewers. I'll be going a little bit deeper into multiple layers for a 3D effect, and then implementing 3D particles and depth of field for an ultra premium look. Section number two is the 3D mind matrix. This section shows how to use 3D, but with class. We're gonna build something straight out of a Netflix documentary. We're learning how to put real textures on our 3D objects, implementing depth of field, 3D text with multiple angles of motion, and then lastly, adding 3D particles. Number three is color on the spectrum. It's not a high quality edit if your color grade looks like dog shit. I'm gonna be giving you guys my favorite LUT and showing you guys how to color grade, putting you ahead of almost everybody else on YouTube. As always, all the assets are linked below so you can follow along. Now do me a favor, smash that like button and subscribe. So before we dive into the high budget animation, we have to grab high budget photos. So I'm gonna go to Imagine Art and I'm gonna use the workflows feature. So I'm just gonna hit the plus option, select upload. I can upload a screenshot and then I'm going to add in a generate image node and this file connects to the image output. And then I'm gonna press the plus button and add in a prompt. I'm gonna write something like, take the image of the man and put him in a wheelchair with tubes in his mouth. I want him in a jumpsuit with the DaVinci Resolve logo. Now before I hit run, I can select this image node, select the model to whatever I want. And I'm just gonna select Nano Banana Pro. Now I can hit run. We can select the plus button, add in another image generation node, add in another prompt node. I'm gonna write something like generate a newspaper article of this boy, say that he was editing too much and it gave him dementia. And I'm going to change the aspect ratio to say nine by 16. You can also try different models at the same time. So for example, I can add in another image generation node just like this. I can grab this prompt and connect it to the prompt and this image to the image. And now I can try something like flux too. I'm also gonna change the prompt to say black and white. And now I can hit run on this one. Local editor, shocking diagnosis, Da Vinci dementia. That's pretty good. And that will fit in an edit very nicely. If I'm editing a long video and need lots of image generated, it can keep me pretty organized. They're also like 80% off right now, which is dirt cheap. So I have an affiliate link in the description. So here we are in DaVinci. I'm going to drag on a fusion composition clip and go to the fusion tab. I'm going to quickly build out a 3D environment because everything is better in 3D and just looks way more premium. So I'm going to drag merge, render, and camera, and then connect them just like this. And then I can drag this merge into this viewer here. I'm going to drag on an image plane just like this. And I'm going to connect a background to this image plane. I'm going to select four corner gradient and I'm just going to slightly brighten two of the corners. Now with the image plane selected, I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and I'm going to take my camera and rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis as well. And then when I drag this up, we have something like that. I'm doing it this way because I kind of want to treat it like I'm filming a table. I'm going to add in another image plane and I'm going to connect these grid lines that I got from Canva onto it just like this and connect this to the merge. The image plane selected, I can drag these up a little bit and rotate them to minus 90. Now I'm going to select the first image plane and I'm just going to drag the scale way up just like this so we have lots of room and then select this image plane and we can just place it somewhere like that. Duplicate this, so copy it and paste it and then connect it to this merge. Drag this one somewhere else now and then I'm also going to drag it up just like that. This is so that when our camera is moving it looks like there's different layers to it. Now here's an image I created with AI. I'm going to drag on another image plane and connect this to the image plane and then this to the merge. Rotate it to minus 90 and then I can just drag it up slightly like this. I'm going to turn the opacity very far down and then I can kind of place this over here. And then again, I can copy this and add it to the merge. And then we can place this one kind of over here. And then again, I'm gonna drag it up so that we're creating a 3D look. Now we can take all this and drag it up just like this. Now we can drag in our first image that's gonna be in focus, drag in another image plane and connect this to that and this to the merge. Rotate the X rotation to minus 90 and we can drag this all the way up like this and size it down and then place it kind of over here. Now, you don't have to spend too much time on this because this is going to look a lot better when we enable the depth of field. All of this stuff is going to become kind of slightly out of focus and it's going to look very nice. So don't worry about aesthetics right now. Now it's just the text. I'm going to have the text on a separate Merge 3D just so I can keep myself organized. So I'll drag in a Merge 3D and connect it to this Merge 3D and I can connect all my text to this Merge. So I'm going to drag in another image plane and then a text. Connect this text to the image plane and this to the Merge. I'm going to write something like 1917 rotate this to minus 90, drag it up and then over. And then we can duplicate this and connect it to the merge again. 
select the image plane, and we're just going to drag this one down. This is going to be our main text. So we can select the text and write whatever we want. So here I just wrote a sentence. Now I can select the text and come to like frame 50. And I can keyframe right on and I can go to frame one. And I can drag this all the way down. And that way, as the animation starts, this text writes out word by word, just like that. Now if I want, I can copy this, paste it, connect it to the merge, place this over here, just like this below the image. And then I'm going to unkeyframe this right on. So that's just always like that. So before we enable depth of field, we're just going to animate our camera and we're going to animate it with lots of different angles so that we really get the full effect. So I'm just going to select this camera. I'm going to drag it up. Under transform, I'm going to rotate the Y angle. I'm also going to rotate the Z angle, further adjust it. So it starts something like that. Now that we have our camera where we want it on the first frame, we can keyframe all of the positions with our camera selected. And then we can go to the last frame position our camera where we want it to end. So I'm going to rotate my Y angle and my Z angle the opposite direction. I'm going to zoom my camera down just like this and then place it so that our words are in frame. Now we're going to select our camera and under controls and control visibility, we're going to check on the focal plane. And now as you can see, we have this green box. So we're going to go to the first frame and wherever this box is, is going to be in focus. We're going to go to controls and we're going to decrease the focal plane until it's hovering over our words because that's what we want to be in focus. So as you can see, 1997 is about where we want it. So I'm just going to increase this focal plane until the green box is right there. So something like that should be good. So all of this stuff will be in focus now. But as you can see, because our camera is animated, the box moves as we scroll. So we're going to go to the first frame here and we're going to keyframe the focal plane and then go to the last frame, further decrease our focal plane so that on the last frame, it's there as well. So right here. And so now, as you can see, as the camera is moving, the focal plane stays relatively about right there. And so now we can select the render node, render type. We're going to select hardware render and then under accumulation effects, we're going to enable accumulation. We're going to enable that and then we're going to increase the quality of our blur. Now you can already see the stuff above this and below this is blurred out. It creates a pretty high quality effect. And so now we can also select settings and turn on motion blur and increase the quality of that. And the last thing I did to this was I added 3D particles so that as the camera's moving, you can see particles floating uh, past it. But I'm gonna show you how to do that in the 3D section of the video. We're gonna be getting a little bit more advanced, but it's still extremely easy. So I'm just going to drag on a fusion composition clip. We're going to go to the fusion tab and then we can quickly build our 3D environment. So I'm going to drag in a merge 3D, a render 3D and a camera 3D. Merge goes to the render and render goes to the media out. And then the camera goes to the merge. We can throw our merge in this viewer and then we can drag in our first FBX file, which is a chessboard. And we're going to connect this to the merge. Right away, we're going to go to the transform and scale this all the way down. I'm going to go to about 0 0.03 and then we can drag this forward just like this. Now, usually we just connect a PNG to this, but because we want it to be a more complex texture, we can hit shift space and add in a blend. And this blend connects to our 3D object. Now, when you download a 3D object, it typically comes with a PNG texture. So we can drag that in and connect it to the blend. And as you can see, it looks like that. Now your 3D objects will also come with a purple image like this, and that creates the texture. So to add that in, we're going to hit shift space and search for a bump map and connect this to the blend. Now we can drag in that purple image and connect this to the bump map. Select the bump map and change it to bump map. And now you're gonna have a little bit more texture on your object. So to make this look like a real cinematic shot, we're gonna add kind of like a bookshelf back here and it's gonna create a really realistic look. I'm going to drag in this 3D object, which is the cabinet, and then we can connect this to the merge. It's way too big, so we're just going to select it select the transform and scale it down like this. Now I'm also gonna rotate it on the X axis like this to minus 90. And then we can drag it in front of this chessboard, just like this. Now we're going to do the same thing. I can select this blend, copy it, and then paste it and connect it to this object. And then I'm going to drag on the bookshelf texture that it came with and connect this to the blend. Now I'm going to copy this bump map and paste it, connect it here, drag this purple image that the object came with into the bump map. Now, something I'm going to do really quick is select the render node and select the render type to hardware render. And then I'm going to enable lighting and shadows. Now, when I add in a directional light and connect this to the merge and rotate it this way like that, we're starting to look a little bit more realistic. Now, I'm also going to add in a spotlight. I'm going to rotate it to minus 100, 
drag it somewhere like this. Now we have kind of a spotlight like this. Now I just dragged in this 3D text preset. It's in the asset pack in the description. You just download it and add it to your fusion folder. But so what we can do is delete this render node and we can connect this merge 3D to this merge 3D. So I'm just gonna go to transform and scale it down. And then I'm gonna place it just like this. Now I'm going to select the multi text tab and I'm going to change it to say Netflix. I'm going to change the font to Anton. And then with the multi text selected, you'll see that we have these controls up here. So if we select the letter, we can rotate the letters like this or like this, and you can get different kind of 3D effects from them. So I'll just keep it at something like that for now. Now I just dragged in this Chrome preset. My friend uh, Clout Boy made these. I think he made all of this actually. So that's cool. This is also in the asset pack and we can actually delete this and this, and then we can connect this to the bevel and this to the font. And as you can see, it gives our text a very nice Chrome look, which is awesome. Now here's a chess piece I downloaded and we can connect this to the merge and then we can scale this up just like this and place it kind of off to the side. Now, something I did just playing around is I copied this and then I connected it to here. And then I grabbed these two Chrome settings and pasted them down here. And then I connected them both to here. And then when you play around with the directional light, now they're both Chrome looking and it looks pretty nice. So here's another queen chess piece I downloaded and I'm just gonna connect this to the merge and I'm just gonna place her right here. Again, I'm gonna copy all these attributes here and then paste them and connect them to this chess piece. You can always just play around with the lighting. I'm gonna add in another spotlight connected to the merge and then i'm going to keep it pointed towards the back here and i'll rotate it to like minus 50. i'm just going to drag it up a little bit here so it's lighting the cabinet behind them so now we can add in our particles i'm going to add in a p emitter and then hit shift space and then add in a p render and then this connects to the merge now over here we can see it there's a lot of little specks in there and we're just going to drag this into our scene we're going to go to region and increase the size as you can see now, it's a lot bigger. Go to style and select the style as N gone. But I'm gonna select this soft circle here and then under size controls, drag down the size to zero and then just slightly increase the size. So as you can see, if we scroll through, they aren't moving. So I'm going to select the P emitter and I'm gonna hit shift space and add in a P turbulence. Here you can increase the strength or decrease the strength of how fast they're moving as you can see, if we scroll through, these little dots are moving. So as you can see, the dots are black right now. It's just because there's not enough light. So we can add in an ambient light, which just lights everything. Connect this to the merge and then decrease the intensity. Now we can animate these letters. So if we come up to our letters up here, we can select the multi text. And if we go under multi, you can see that we have different ways of animating this. Lots of different programmed so I'm just gonna go rotation multi and I'm going to drag that up until all the letters are kind of messed up. Go to the first frame and I'm going to keyframe that. Then I'm gonna come over to frame 90 and I'm gonna set that back to zero. On the first frame they're scrambled and then they slowly form into the logo Netflix. Now we can select our camera, drag our camera back as far as we want it. And I'm going to keyframe all these positions, come to the last frame and then drag our camera close like this. Now we can select the spline and we can smooth this out as much as we want. So now this is where everything becomes very realistic. So I'm going to select the camera and under control visibility, I'm going to select focal plane. This green square comes up now. So if we slide to this focal plane slider, we can adjust it. Wherever this green box is, is what's gonna be in focus. So I'm gonna to come to the first frame and I'm going to increase my focal plane until it's hovering over these objects. About right there is perfect. And we're gonna keyframe it and then go to the last frame and drag it back to the position we want it. So right about there. And now we can just scroll through our timeline and make sure it kind of stays there the entire time. Sometimes you have to go to the spline, uncheck everything except the focal plane, and you just have to adjust this to the motion of your camera. But as you can see, nothing's happened yet. So we're gonna select our render and under controls here, we're gonna to go to accumulation effects, enable accumulation effects. We're gonna enable depth of field, we're gonna increase the quality and decrease the amount of blur. So if I look at my viewer here, it looks like there's still too much blur. So we're gonna to come to the amount of blur and we're gonna decrease this even more. So now if we zoom in, you can see that this is just slightly out of blur and this is in blur the entire time. 
The last thing if you want to do, if your computer can handle it, is select render, settings, and turn on motion blur, and then increase the quality. And everything is going to look very, very nice. So how I color grade is actually very simple. Very, very simple. I just have a very good lot that I'm giving away in the asset pack. So we're going to take some old footage from last video. And this is how it looks just straight out of my camera. I'm going to go to the color tab. And then right away, I'm going to right click and click add node and then corrector. Holding down shift, we can bring it into here. Now here's my favorite LUT in the asset pack. I'm going to drag this on just like that. Now already you can see it's a little bit more blue, a little bit more movie looking. Now I'm going to select this first node and I'm going to increase the orange temperature just a little bit to counteract the blue from the LUT. I'm going to increase the saturation to about 60 and then increase mid detail sometimes highlights and shadows, and then contrast. Now back in the edit tab, I'm dragging on an adjustment clip. I'm gonna to go to a resolve FX and search for the edge detect and drag this on. Now I'm going to click this box. I'm going to increase the blur, the edge width, and then decrease the brightness. Now, if we look at a before and after with the edge detect, you can see that it just brightens it and makes it a little bit more. Now that's pretty much all I do. If you look at the before and after, it's a pretty big difference. Pretty simple, but it's really all you need to do.